cost of rent is on the rise across the country. In fact, a recent report shows nearly 400 U.S. cities are seeing increase, increases in the average rent price. According to Rent.com, the national average rent of a one-bedroom apartment is up 25.3%. Yikes! <laughs> From June of last year, it's slightly worse for two-bedroom apartments, which are up by 26.3%. Ouch in every way possible. Brian Carberry joins us now for more, and he's a senior managing editor at apartmentguide.com. Oh, my goodness. We know the pandemic, of course, and inflation, the main drivers of this trend. But can you just break down for us how we've gotten to this point where the average rent in some cities is just right through the roof? Absolutely. It is going through the roof in a lot of places, and we are definitely seeing more major cities right now that are seeing rent price increases, that we're seeing cities that are staying flat or even decreasing. You know, you hit on the pandemic, you hit on inflation, but we really need to look at the housing market in general. You had a lot of people at the end of 2019, beginning, or sorry, the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, looking to buy a home, and then that housing market really shot up, turned a lot of people away from buying a home towards renting. It was about six months, nine months later, we really saw the rental market shoot up about a year ago now that we started seeing these massive increases in rent price spikes to double digit levels that have kind of stayed up since then. You know, it, it's interesting though, because if you look since January of this year, it has been relatively flat. A one bedroom apartment is only up about 1%, a two bedroom apartment only up 3% from the beginning of this year. So we could start to see some stabilization as we go into the end of the summer and we're comparing to a time where those prices have already increased. So some possible good news for renters there, but it really just does boil down to all those factors like you said, and just the demand for an apartment is so much higher and the supply is just not there to really meet that demand right now. So I, I know if I ask you what cities are being hit hardest by rent increases, the answer is every city. But can you drill down for me a little bit and tick off some that are really at the top of the list? Yeah, you, you're right. There are a lot of cities that are facing these increases. And when you look at just the cost that you're going to pay for rent, it's really cities in six or seven markets that are really always going to be at the top of that list. You're going to talk New York and the metro area there, Boston, Miami, Southern California, San Francisco, Seattle. And we're starting to see Austin, Texas is a market that we're watching. Austin, as a city in general, rent prices there are up over 100% compared to this time last year. So people are going to be paying more than $1,000 per month addition Mm. now compared to what they were a year ago. Mm. And then you look at some of those neighboring areas near Austin, Pflugerville, Texas is one that is a smaller area, but we're seeing a lot of really high priced properties come on the market. And that is really driving that average up. In Pflugerville right now, you're looking at almost $5,000, for that one bedroom apartment in June. So the last full month of data that we had access to, we're waiting to see what that July data looks like when it comes out, which should come in a day or two to see if it's really staying up or if that's a minor little blip. Regardless, that's a lot of money for people in Texas, where it's a relatively affordable place to live. Cost of living is down. Austin market really taking off, though, and is definitely a place to watch for these explosive rent prices. Okay, I'm crossing Austin off my list. Uh, <laughs> and as the Federal Reserve hikes and in interest rates, um, the housing market is expected to cool down. But what about the rental market? Yeah, you know, as the housing market does cool down, we really just do need to pay attention to really what happens. So we are seeing more inventory coming on the housing market, but with mortgage rates still up and they are beginning to slowly trickle down, you're still seeing a lot of people not willing to buy yet because of those high rates that they're going to need to pay. So when that rate starts coming down, we then may start to see some more movement from renters to buyers. But until that happens, we are still seeing a lot of this upward pressure on those rental properties. So in the short term, I do think it's still going to be very competitive. As we start to see that shift, though, and that demand falls for apartments, that's when we'll begin to really see these prices stabilize and start coming down in a lot of areas, get back to that normal level where we would expect it to be. I like that normal level. That's a good, that's a good way of thinking about it. Brian Carberry, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.